Elon Musk, the world's wealthiest billionaire now, is renowned for his audacious and imaginative statements. One of his most astonishing claims pertains to the price of Starship launches. When the spacecraft enters regular operation, only $2 million? Yeah, okay. When he said this, everyone laughed at him. SpaceX will have eventually spent $5 billion or more on its Starship vehicle and launch infrastructure by the end of the year. So what does the cost of Starship launch look like when it's launching regularly? We'll get into that and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX achieved a significant milestone on Monday, June 26th, as it successfully performed a static fire test of Starship SN25, the upper stage prototype attempted for the second flight attempt to orbit. The test took place at 7.27 p.m. Central Time at SpaceX's Starbase Texas launch facility. It involved igniting all six SN25's Raptor engines for approximately five seconds. Static fire tests are routine pre-launch procedures that verify the functionality and performance of a rocket's engines while the vehicle remains firmly grounded on the launch mount. Key milestone completed for Flight 2, SpaceX chief engineer Elon Musk said after the test ignition. This is also the prelude to Mars, Musk added. So when Starship starts going up regularly, it'll really change the way we go to space. More importantly, by fully reusing the vehicle and eliminating any need to discard expensive flight hardware, the cost reductions to SpaceX will likely be massive. Musk himself has stated that SpaceX's costs could be as low as $2 million a launch, while analysts have suggested something around $10 million might be more reasonable. At a $10 million cost per launch, putting 100 tons of payload into orbit would come to about $100 per kilogram. The current cost to SpaceX for a Falcon 9 launch is likely somewhere around $3,400 per kilogram, and so Starship's current cost per kilogram is a very tall order. Because of that, it seems understandable why some think that Starship is going to change the game. However, if we want to increase our access to space, then cost necessarily isn't the key indicator that we should be tracking. SpaceX is going to need to pass those cost reductions onto its customers in order for satellite providers to reap the benefits. This is where a lot of the skepticism is, because it seems that there's little incentive for SpaceX to pass on those savings or any precedent that they'll do so in the future. Let's explain. On December 15, 2015, SpaceX accomplished the seemingly impossible. They successfully landed the first stage of a rocket for the first time. This meant that SpaceX would soon start reusing its Falcon 9 first stages, an innovation that could seemingly slash the cost of getting into orbit. Just three months later, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell spoke at the Satellite 2016 conference in Maryland. At the time, she speculated on what Falcon 9 first stage reusability might mean for SpaceX customers, citing that it could potentially reduce prices by 30%. That's down $40 million a launch. And at that time, a Falcon 9 launch ran $61.2 million. This wasn't the first time SpaceX leadership openly contemplated how reusability would impact prices. Looking even further back to the Singapore Satellite Industry Forum in 2013, Shotwell there speculated that Falcon 9 reusability could mean launch prices to customers as low as 5 to 7 million. Well, it's been 10 years since the 2013 mention of 5 to 7 million prices and 7 years from the 2016 speculation of the $40 million prices. Since that time, SpaceX has widely surpassed the industry's expectations on reusability, flying some of its first stage boosters over 10 times. So what is a Falcon 9 launch priced at today? $67 million. The price has actually increased about $5.8 million from the pricing in 2016. And if we take inflation into account, the real price hasn't increased that much over time, but has actually stayed the same. So what happened there? Did SpaceX's cost benefit from reusability not materialize? Actually, this is just because SpaceX hasn't passed any of those savings onto its customers. They simply expanded their margins and made more money on each launch. And actually, that's entirely understandable. When fully expendable in 2015, the Falcon 9 was already the cheapest launch vehicle in its lift class at 61.2 million per launch. Today, at 67 mil, that's still the case. In fact, a ride on the Atlas V rocket is twice that. Not that you could get a ride on the Atlas V anyway, they're all sold out until its retirement. Also, since 2015, the Falcon 9 vehicle has become arguably the most reliable rocket on the market, with over 115 successful launches in a row. And with no competition out there putting pricing pressure on SpaceX, why would they reduce their prices? You could make a strong argument that they should actually be raising them, which they are. SpaceX is laser-focused on getting humanity to Mars, an enormously expensive ambition. 
And right now, it's not in their interest to charitably pass savings on to customers when they already offer the best product on the market. Just look at the launch frequency of their rideshare business. SpaceX conducts a few rideshare launches each year where they carry many small satellite payloads in a single Falcon 9 and deploy them all into low Earth orbit. The wait time for a customer to get on one of those missions is around two years. SpaceX could fill their manifest for twice as many rideshare missions as they currently perform and reduce wait time significantly. They choose not to do this, though, because their rideshare missions are simply not high-value launches. It is operationally intensive to work with many customers to pack potentially over 100 satellites into a single rocket, and then those customers are extremely price sensitive. Instead, SpaceX chooses to focus on pricier services like crewed missions to the International Space Station, expensive national security and commercial satellites, or Starlink deployment, which SpaceX hopes will bring significant recurring revenue for the company. So when we do look forward to the introduction of Starship, why would SpaceX be incentivized to dedicate many missions to small satellite payloads when it would have to work with hundreds or even thousands of customers to fill a single Starship with CubeSats? While Musk states the company could potentially conduct up to three Starship launches per day, it'll take years to get to that launch cadence. In the early days and years of Starship, SpaceX is still going to prioritize deploying Starlink, delivering high-value human landing system missions for NASA, and maturing the technology required to put humans on Mars. On top of that, what competition is going to pressure SpaceX to bring its pricing anywhere close to its marginal cost of $10 million a launch? If Starship can put 100,000 kilograms in low Earth orbit, its nearest competitor by payload class is NASA's Space Launch System, which was most recently approximated to cost over $4 billion a launch. Starship is likely to be priced early on somewhere around the $150 million to $250 million per launch mark. At that price, Starship will still be a great deal for customers at only about one and a half times the price of a Falcon Heavy, while carrying more than two times the mass and volume to LEO than a Falcon Heavy. The cost per kilogram in that price range would be somewhere around $15 to $2,500 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. That would be on a full Starship, but keep in mind that a rideshare Starship for small sats would be carrying much less than its full 100-ton payload capacity, and so the price per kilogram would get higher. So in the middle of that range, $2,000 per kilogram, we're talking about a 42% reduction in price below Falcon 9's cost per kilogram of $3,400. That's an incredible benefit to the industry, but it's not in the order of magnitude or greater price reduction that we see too many hoping for. And that'll do it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.